let's start generating some beat and prose. We have our outline done. We can pick a chapter from here, create the chapter, or we can come over here. The option is up to you. It's just convenience to have one over here and down here as well. Pick whichever one you want. I'm gonna look through this real quick just to decide on one that I want to do. I like this one. I wanna go with chapters. So I wanna click chapter six here and it's gonna create the document for me. Always remember, if for whatever reason you don't have this box, more than likely it's because this is turned off. So I can get rid of that and I can turn it back on. The chapter six here, the document, I can rename it there, or I can also rename it here. Click out of it, there you go, pops up right here. You'll see we have our chapter outline summary. Again, he gets closer to the Caruso brothers, leaving a trail of destruction in his wake. This button can be very confusing, but it's useful if you just want to switch up your summary right here for various reasons. It's actually useful to write your whole story in one box, in one document, without needing to create different documents. So we see chapter six here. I can now update it. I want to do chapter seven now. Well, there's my chapter seven. And I could keep going through like that if I wanted to. And I'm going to go ahead and generate the beats. But again, you could bring in your own. That generated 13 beats for us. There is the thumbs down and thumbs up icon on a lot of the boxes. So always feel free to leave some feedback. I will thumbs down if, you know, my beats generated and they, do, they were just really bad. Something was off with the prompting or a bad role with the AI. I thumbs down and I, a submit feedback box will pop up and you can tell them what happened. And using that thumb down just helps them to potentially spot any trends. You know, if a certain model is giving errors all the time, they can start investigating to try to find that problem. Beats is very important, and that is going to be a whole nother advanced level video in the advanced series that I'll do. But starting out, I would recommend just kind of leaving them like this or playing with things to make little changes. The most important thing about beats, do not use pronouns. They're in here. There's not a whole lot in this particular chapter it looks like when I always tell people I don't care how many times I have to put a character's name in the sentence again that's one of those things I'm not giving the AI the chance to mess up I'm not giving it the chance to be confused so describe the trail of destruction left by Frank as he moves closer to the Caruso family or the Caruso brothers territory yeah that's pretty straightforward it understands right but I can still put Right in there, that's not going to mess anything up. And as you can see, again, there's not a lot of pronouns in this one, but when it starts giving heady, getting heavy into the pronoun usage, that's when things can get tricky. You know, it might confuse, okay, who's the he that is talking about, depending on the sentence. So just avoid pronouns, avoid vagueness like a man or a woman, name the people. It's the easiest way. Save yourself the headache. Yes, I do end up with some pronouns, but if you look at my entire project, there are very few pronouns from the brain dump all the way through my beats. Very few pronouns exist throughout my entire project. So I'm just going to look through this real quick. Open the chapter with a description of the bus in the city. Okay. So I want you to notice this. Each beat will write 100 to 200 words. This is a beat. All of these with a number is a beat. When it starts writing the prose, it writes in what we call stride. That is two beats at a time. So it's going to write one and two, then it's going to write three and four. So beat one, beat two, stride one, stride two. So what I want to point out with that is you need to make sure you're asking the AI for enough action or details for instance this first one is open the chapter with a description of the city setting the scene 
okay, that could be good, but I can also see this causing problems with looping because it's not doing enough information or asking for enough information. Think of it, always use the food descriptions. If you have these two beads right here, I'm going to take them out. But these two beads are similar in size. But when we say beef up your beads or, you know, make them thicker, we don't necessarily mean that you have to add a lot of words. But think of your words, the actions like ingredient. If you go in the kitchen and make a sandwich, that doesn't take a lot of ingredients. So if I say the characters walk from the house to the barn, that doesn't take a lot of words. If you go into the kitchen and cook a five-course meal, that takes a lot of time and a lot of ingredients. So if I say the characters walk from the house to the barn in the pouring rain, I was describing the setting, describing the weather, describing what they're talking about, giving some lines of dialogue. You see how you can start building up the ingredients or words, however you want to look at it. So that's what we mean by making your beats thicker. If you find when you're generating prose that it starts looping, you know, you might have this one go through, but in the next stride, it starts describing the buckling city again and then picks up where it left off. A lot of times that looping is just because it's grasping at something to pull into to meet that word limit that it has here. If it generates beats three or four, but you know what? It still has some words left that it needs to use up before it stops. It's not just going to say, oh, I don't have anything else to write about. Let me go ahead and stop. That's not the way the AI works. Instead, it's going to come to this point where it's gone through everything you've given it. It still needs to write 100, 150 more words. So it's going to pull information in from somewhere. It could be pulling in from these beats. It could be pulling in from another chapter. It's going to pull in from somewhere. And that's where a lot of the confusion comes in. You know, people might think, oh, I have, you know, four sentences in my beats. That doesn't matter. It depends on what you're asking the AI to do with those four sentences. If it's asking for a lot of description, a lot of action, a lot of details, that's what it needs. So these one sentence beats can work great. Again, it all depends on what you're asking the AI to do. So what else can you do with beats? Anything, you have 2,000 words here. If you know how you want that scene playing out, put it all right here. Put specific lines of dialogue that you want a character to say. Tell it exactly what you want a character to do, how you want another character to respond to that character's actions. This is your chance to make this scene yours and fit your vision. Don't be afraid to just obliterate these beats right here and make them your own. As I showed in another video, thing you could do is to add what we call a header. So that's a simple one. Again, that's what we're trying to do with this series, keep things simple for you. But it just lets it know to write in third person, past tense, from Frank's POV from this scene. I could tell it I want crude language. Crude language is preferred. Focus on the impending confrontation between Frank and the brothers. And I would name them out. I don't remember all their names. But I would actually name them. I don't always be in that poor little bin. So that's all kinds of little things you could do with your header. And there's just so much more. It's all the users have their own way of doing things. That's why we are, we sound like a broken record. But we're always saying experiment. Play around with it. Find what works for you. The thing to remember when you use a header is to always have this number one. So don't have number ones in your header up here. What this does, if you click on this check beats, it's saying, okay, they have a header right here. And this number one is saying, here's where the beats start. This is what it's going to start writing. Let me remove this one right here. So now we have what's originally our header and what is originally the first beat. Let me right past it. So now you see that first beat is included in our header. Beat one 
according to this, is introduced the Caruso brothers. It's actually beat two. So we can put our one back. And the rest of the beats don't matter. I could have beat five. I could not have numbers. So it's actually one, two, three, four, five. Well, I got one, five, no numbers, five again. But when I come down and check my beats, everything's in order. So this one right here, that's the important one to keep in mind. I'm just going to change these because it's easier to keep track in demonstrations. So if numbers don't matter other than that one, how does it know that it's a new beat? If it's not saying, oh, here's number two, here's number three, that's clearly not what it's looking for. It's looking for the carriage returns. Again, let's go back to this one. It's got to open the chapter for beat and one, introduce Caruso Brothers for beat two. I'm going to remove that, show you again. It's still saying beats one and two. But if I put this with that line, getting rid of that carriage return, open the chapter, introduce Caruso Brothers, that was beat one, two, show the brothers witnessing the aftermath was beat three. Now show the brothers winning, witnessing the aftermath is beat two because we put those on one line. So it's something you could play around with and you'll start to get an idea of how much is too little or too much for your beats for that prose generation. Next, we are going to move into actually creating some prose with the different models.